Hi guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. Uh, okay, so I got an idea from a friend uh, at work who suggested I make a kind of tomb room, a room of tombs. Now, I like this idea. Kind of reminds me of like Skyrim and stuff, and I've got like a lot of inspiration from that. Uh, the idea was to create something that could go in a room that would make the whole room effectively, a, uh, in, in theory, maybe in, in the theatre of the mind a little bit, uh, a kind of a, a tomb filled uh, room with sarcophaguses and, and things like that. And it would have maybe holes in, in the wall with the dead uh, placed in them on slabs and things. Now there's two ways I could have done this. I see I didn't want to make uh, something that was like a one use only. I wanted to make it kind of modular because I like modular. Modular is more useful to me. So I think instead of putting walls on the on the the D and D terrain because not very many people use walls on D and D terrain. They're kind of unnecessary. Um, but so instead, instead of putting walls on the, on the terrain, I figured maybe it would be best to put something in the middle of the room that would imply the existence of tombs or uh, not coffins. Well, what's the word? Like just like a hole, like holes in the wall with 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 dead in them, with draugers and skeletons and things and other undead nasties. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a probably a I don't know, this sort of size piece that would just go in on or on top of an existing dungeon tile. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet, but we'll figure it out. All right, let's get to it. All right, so first things first, we need three pieces of XPS form. Now these are about three inches by four inches and then about 20 mil thick and now I'm sorry for mixing imperial and metric there but this is the UK and that's what we do so the third piece however is a little bit thinner I took a five millimeters off the bottom um, of one side of it just to make it slightly shallower so that I can add a bit of extra material to the bottom uh, these side pieces here that I'm taking away are cut out using a proxon but I cut away an entire kind of um, uh, rectangle shape out of it and then I cut away the bottom piece. I'm going to keep those arches for later and then I'll go back in once the rest of it has been assembled. So taking a hot glue gun just gonna get a good amount on these pieces and then line them back up. Just reinserting the arches there on all three sides. Perfect. And now I'm going to add a little bit to the sides just to flatten them up. I actually shaved off the side pieces here by about 5mm just to really even up the edges and make them nice and flush. And once the side cladding is on, which is just another sheet of XPS form, 5mm uh, thick, uh, I'm just cutting out or re-cutting out, if you like, the uh, the archways where the bodies are going to sit. You have to be careful doing this piece because it's sort of difficult to find out where you've previously cut. Now, we need a keystone carving in at the top of each archway. This is pretty much the only method I've got of doing this. Just using a sharpened paintbrush handle. I 
and then using my instant brick tool just gonna go around the edges and give it a little bit of detail to this otherwise pretty plain looking uh, side wall Now you'll notice some of the corners there were missing, I'm just going to add some extra corner pieces in, it's just some one centimeter by one centimeter by, I think it's three inches, um, or two and a half inches in height, just to uh, finish off the corner pieces with like a big solid block. Right now that grey XPS form there is looking really flat so it's time to texture it. I'm going to go over the whole thing with this aluminium ball. You'll notice there's a 5mm thick XPS form base that's been applied to the bottom there. Uh, that was just to um, make up for the XPS uh, form that I trimmed away at the beginning. I just cut a piece of um, like 10mm into two flat pieces. I've added a little step on the front as well. And now the other half of that bottom base piece uh, is going to go on the top as a kind of roof, if you like. And then that will be textured as well. God, hot glue is amazing stuff, but I'm sick of these little wisps, they're everywhere. Alright, so it turns out that the best analog for miniature cloth is just cloth. So, I took a piece of pillowcase, I think it was, and I just uh, you know, sliced off a small piece using uh, an X-Acto knife. I didn't want it to be too neat, I want it to look kind of uh, rough, worn, and kind of frayed and I don't know maybe nibbled on by rats or something this is a tomb after all so I attacked the edge of it with a exacto knife pulled off some threads and made it look a little bit worse for wear and then placed it into the gap that I was putting it in and I placed it in there dry and then I added some watered down PVA glue and just kind of really soaked it so that it would stick. It's kind of like a, a paper mache, but cloth mache, I guess. And then I wanted to put a few little holes in the wall so that I could stick some candles in them later on. So I just carefully used an X-Acto blade and cut into the five millimeter thick cladding around the edge and just kind of pulled that bit out. And hopefully left it kind of neat. Alright, well you know what goes great in dungeons? That's chains. Chains look cool. So, I grabbed a few pieces from a kind of jewellery uh, set assorted jewellery pieces and I made a little loop with some chain on it and then took a little piece of styrene card held it securely with some pliers and drilled a little hole through the middle with a dremel you could probably use a knife for this and then I bent the loop at a right angle and placed the pin part through the uh, plastic card sheet, the styrene sheet, and then just add a little bit of super glue to fix the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. 
Now moving on to the dry brushing stage, I just want to cover the walls in a slightly different colour to the kind of roof and corner pieces. So I've gone with it, it's, it looks kind of grey but it's, it's more of a tan colour in reality and I did add a few little bits of brown and things to the wall just to change the hue a little bit and hopefully make it a little bit more interesting once the wash goes on. And then I went over the corners and the bottom, the base, the roof, the stonework around the openings in the side and I did that all with a kind of medium grey. Now I could have left the top kind of section of this, like the roof top black for this as, as like negative space, but I thought maybe I might want to use it as passable terrain at some point in the future, so I decided to finish it off properly. And for the chain that I added earlier, I'm just going to base cut that in Rhinox Hide by Citadel, and then Later on, I'll add some riser rust. Obviously, I didn't want the cloth in the bottom of these tombs to look too fancy, so I just used uh, khakis and earth tones, tans, browns, things like that. For the uh, for the colour for these. Now, as with most brickwork that I do, I tend to paint a few slightly different colours, just to add a bit of variation to the brickwork. So I'm just picking out a few here and doing them in kind of vanillas and browns and things, just to make it slightly more interesting to look at rather than boring and grey. Once that's dry, I mean really dry, uh, just put on some wash. I'm going to use the same wash that I use for every other dungeon tile that I make. And it's just going to go all over the whole thing. You really want to use the same wash mixture every time because that way it's going to match and you're not going to get too much colour variation and, and things not looking like they belong there. So just go over the whole thing, top, bottom, sides, even the cloth everything. And remember it's a good idea to use a stippling kind of motion here so that you don't reactivate the paint underneath when you're kind of brushing it on. So if you just kind of stab it into the detail it should work pretty well. And now as you can see here, I'm just going to dry brush some of the texture back onto this because that wash has really muted down those colours and added a few browns and blacks to, to the, some of that texture. So just to pick it out again with a very light dry brush of uh, medium grey just to pick up the edges, almost like an edge highlight if you like. Now I've got a lot of grey on that chain so I'm going to add some riser rust to it and hopefully that will cover the grey and really improve that rusty effect. 
Now I needed to make some kind of small urns, little vases and things. So I'm going to use some craft beads again. These things are awesome. You can just make almost anything out of them. The idea was just add a little bit of super glue, press two of them together, super glue, two of them together, super glue, two of them together. Done. Alright, so I really wanted to make a kind of bound up human body, like it was bound up or mummified in like linen or bandages or something. So I just want to make an analogue for a human body really, it doesn't have to be exact. So I put two little bits of cocktail stick there in a piece of foil, just to act as the legs to give a bit of structure to it. And then I kind of folded together bits of foil to make a vague human body shape. Kind of smoothed it out a little bit with a little craft tool there. And you've got a basic shape of a human body. And then I'm going to wrap it up in, instead of using cloth, I'm going to use very, um, very untextured tissue paper, which I understand is a commodity right now. But it wasn't when I did this. And I added some PVA and water mixture to the dry tissue paper just to make it like a hard paper mache. And then I painted up some skeletons and some candles and I added them to the piece. And I added that little guy at the front, put some skulls on for heads, and got some wrapped up skeletons and droggers pretty cool so just added a few extra details on the front there the urns have been added a gold and a silver and then I'm add a shield here as well which I did in a bronze effect and then as a matter of finishing off the candles I'm starting here with a bit of Uriel yellow from Citadel just to get the nice vibrant flame paint it up and then I'm just going to add a tiny bit of riser rust to the top of that flame Riser Rust is just a really vibrant orange and that's really all I was looking for here. So just at the very top of each flame. And that should pretty much do it. Let's roll some glamour shots. Um, yeah, I'm really chuffed with this. It's pretty cool. It's all in the details, you know, just just those little extra bits that you put on every time. If in doubt, throw candles at it. That's, that's basically just the secret to all cool D&D terrain. Um, it's, it's also durable, playable, solid, pretty much, all the way through. Uh, yeah, so that's, oh yeah, also. Like, when I was modeling this guy on the front, I just imagined that he'd be this kind of like clearly dangerous individual um, who was probably kind of like a, a ringleader or something, but someone who definitely needed to be bound up in chains rather than just buried normally. Uh, I was pretty happy with that little touch. So, um, yeah, very cool. Definitely give this one a go. It gives any room like if you place this in like a kind of a big room in the middle, 
you can just basically imply that the whole room is just full of things like this, you know, little graves and things. So, yeah, really cool, really happy with that one. Uh, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, if you liked it, then uh, let me know in the comments and subscribe and all that stuff. And then hopefully I'll get back to creating another video soon. I've got a few projects on the go at the moment. So, um, and obviously there's a lot going on in the world right now. Uh, but but I will do my best to, to get more videos out soon. Uh, that's all for this video. Thanks for stopping by and uh, happy crafting.